Complete change of subject. Are you certain that's the water? What should the Arizona legislature be doing about our water shortage? The portion of water we are allowed from the Colorado River is a subset. Pending water grab, pending water grabbers like the Rosemont Line. The order should be what? I don't know. All right, we'll start with Jim. Jim, J.B., Victoria, Pamela, and then Randy. Well, anyway, first of all, this is Arizona. We're a desert. We've been in a, um, a drought for how many years? You know, Rosemont thinks that they have to have a mine down here. They think that it's going to be all right if they start putting chemicals in the ground and chemicals running off of their mine. And that's going to destroy another, another source of our water, which we don't have. Uh, we're selling a lot of our water from the CAP as a direct to California, which that's another issue that I'd like to know. But, folks, I think there was also a bill going through where they were trying to change the law. They said that uh, we have a law now that says before you can build a development analysis, you have to prove you have a 100-year source of water, and they were trying to change that. And then, you know, where do they think all this water is going to come from if our groundwater has dropped dramatically, dramatically over the years? Some of the water from the mines we can't even use because it's still contaminated. So we're going to have to get in there and change it state blue and show them how we're going to have to do this. But we are going to have to get our fair share of the CAP water and we're going to have to take and stop all this contamination. And do I think we need those mop lines? Because uh, I think we have enough mines. So water is my favorite element. And when I rode my bike across the country last year, I went from California to Washington, D.C. And I rode past <laughs> many stages of the Colorado River. And it's a beautiful river. We got so much water from all of the upper basin and lower basin states. We get extract water from the Colorado River to um, water their agriculture practices or for their homes or for industrial uses. They all have needs. But this cycle, I was very surprised to find that CAP and DWI, which is the Department of Water Resources, they have been fighting over who owns water for a very long time. And the governor wants to say, you know what, it's mine. So you guys, you guys need to push a bill through the legislature to make sure that I have control of it. That didn't happen. We have strain coming from the upper basin states. There was this week a meeting in Las Vegas, and they said, hey, Arizona, why are you banking so much water? We should be adjusting your allocation in case there's drought. We currently don't have any drought contingency plans, or DCP plus, and we need to come together as Southern Arizona to voice our concerns. I sit on the Tucson Water Regional Council, which is the water manager and a lot of the players in town, some of whom you would consider corporate and bad, but you know what, they're players too, and they feel cut out of the conversation as well. When this bill that didn't go through the legislature was being drafted, anything south of Maricopa was, was not even considered. So that should outrage you too, because they're not even thinking about your water supply when they're coming up with legislation that's going to dictate how we use our most precious resource in Arizona over the next generation. I think it's also really important to give a shout out to our tribal um, sovereign lands, because they have grandfathered water rights before us. And we need to keep that in mind too. So we just found out this, this week in the newspaper that Arizona will be facing a serious water shortage in a year and a half. And as I said earlier, we're not ready for it. We are not prepared. We've had plenty of time to get prepared. We've been in a, an emergency drought situation in Arizona for about 19 years. This is not a secret. This is not something that they just spun on us. This is something that we should have been dealing with a long time ago. About a year ago, Governor Ducey put together this water advisory panel. 
There was nobody on that panel from the tribes. They had the top priority in the water allocations. They weren't even brought in. There was nobody on that panel from south of the Gila River. What is wrong with that picture? This is politics run amok. When we turn on the faucet, we're assured that water comes out, right? That may not be the case for much longer, unless we come together and do something. And we can't have our legislature just putting things aside, putting it off for political reasons, maybe dealing with it later, once they figure out how they personally can profit from it, which is the way a lot of the things go up there. We need to have a contingency plan. That's one of the reasons why I think a legislator's job is so critically important is we have to deal with these things. These are life and death measures. And when we see all of these firefighters, or all of these forest fires, rather, it takes a lot of water to fight those. We don't have that kind of water. So we have to be really, really careful with what we do have. We need that contingency plan. We need to work together with the experts, with the shareholders, and you are shareholders. So you have to be involved in that as well. So on water, uh, the legislature is actually not doing nothing. They're walking backwards. Uh, <laughs> we, there are so many lies that are told about water in the, on the floor of the house, it's not even funny, right? We got into these huge debates with, um, there were two bills that actually did pass and got signed by the governor. One, what, both of them would have uh, forced the uh, Arizona Department of, of Water Resources to recreate uh, EPA uh, programs with less money and so one of them was that would allow uh, businesses to inject uh, fluids into the groundwater supply and Kirsten Engel and Representative Bowers were having this amazing great debate and I wasn't actually going to uh, to talk about it but I started asking questions to myself I thought well what kind of fluids are we going to inject in the groundwater so I pushed my button and I asked her a question and we had quite a long discussion on the floor of the house so what do they want to inject into the water supply uh, gas and oil uh, waste uh, solid human waste mining waste what could go wrong brackish water you know and it's like are you kidding so why are we doing this we're doing this so we can get around the EPA reviews so we're not just not doing things. They are Republicans who are really, they, they're like, there's plenty of water. Let's have some more houses down in Sierra Vista. And so it's really dangerous. I have been going to all the water-wise lunches that we have once a week in the legislature to learn more about all the moving parts of this. And Doug Ducey is at the center of it. Now his, his line, which sounds good, is that Arizona water should speak with one voice. Well, what he wants is he wants an appointee of his to be the one voice. He is, uh, they are fighting between the uh, Central Arizona Project and the Arizona Department of Water Resources and the tribes. And so rather than looking at the dropping levels of Lake Mead, there's a lot of political infighting going on. So yes, I'm glad that article was in the newspaper. There, we have to be vigilant and not just push for good policy, but try to do whatever we can to stop these bad policies. I know really nothing about water because I'm not going to all this, but I will tell you that uh, Randy knows quite a bit about it. Uh, I know he's against the, uh, the Rosemont Line. Um, he has been to many of the, the, the same conferences on water. Uh, and again, this is another question that he will answer on Facebook and through constant contact.